macroeconomic gaps, inflation and deflation. We will start by assuming the macroeconomy is in a stable state. With the short-run equilibrium between aggregate demand and short-run aggregate supply at the full employment level of the economy, shown as YF. Full employment exists when all those who are willing and able to work have paid employment. It does not include people temporarily out of work. A negative demand side shock can reduce aggregate demand, causing a negative output gap. This could be the result of a fall in a component of aggregate demand, or a fiscal or monetary shock. This is what happened to many global economies following the 2008 financial crash. The classical economists assumed that wages would adjust downwards, given the high level of unemployment. This would cause short-run aggregate supply to increase, and the curve move to the right. Eventually, a new equilibrium would be found, with lower wages and higher output, the economy would move back to YF. However, Keynesian economists recognize that this classical wage adjustment process is weak, and intervention by government or monetary authorities may be required. This would be through expansionary fiscal or monetary policy. Such policies might include lower income tax, rates of interest, or quantitative easing. Aggregate demand will return to a stable, full employment, equilibrium. On the other hand, aggregate demand may exceed the economy's capacity to produce, creating a positive output gap. The classical economists believed that the economy would self-adjust through rising wages. This would shift up the short-run aggregate supply curve causing upward pressure on prices, a contraction in AD, and a reduction in real output, reducing the positive output gap. However, modern economists accept that the economy will not fully self-adjust, and government and authorities must employ tighter fiscal or monetary policy. Positive and negative output gaps can also be looked at by comparing actual output with the trend rate of growth. If demand exceeds the trend, there will be inflationary pressure, and if demand is less than capacity, deflationary pressure will exist. Fiscal and monetary policy can help adjust the macroeconomy, moving it nearer to its stable trend rate.